Hey guys, today isn't one of my videos, but I thought I might give it a quick introduction. Uh, just as A, Dane might not even want me posting it, but you know, I think this message is important and I'm not getting advertising for this, I'm not setting advertising on, I just want this message to be out there because it's something that I think is really important for people to at least take into consideration. Um, sorry I haven't been around much, I'm actually currently moving right now, I've just bought a kitten and I've just got so much going on, but you know, hopefully if he'll still have me, there's a very, well my favourite YouTuber wants to do a uh, show together, so I think that's something to look forward to, hopefully he's still keen for it, you know who you are legend, but um, today I just wanted to post this, just to sort of post something and it has everything to do with what we talk about on this channel and I, I really appreciate Dane's work and I, I think that a lot of you guys who may not know about him might appreciate it too. So sit back, relax. Yes, it's a bit controversial, but what isn't these days? So I hope you enjoy. Later. Thank you so much for the safe space and I'm going to now trust you on that. Okay. My question is about race and it's about labeling. We like to label. And when I meet someone who is of African descent, African American, I will refer to them as African American. Okay. But if it's a friend that I've known for a while, I will call him and I will refer to him as black. So am I overly sensitive or am I appropriate? African American. is not our home. Let me let that hang in the atmosphere for a while. Right, that's right, that's right. I said at this gathering of the masters, Africa is not your home. home, home, home. I'm an American. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. I mean, you're going to get a lot of flack for saying you're not African American. You know that, right? What do you think, Morgan? Is this political yeah. correctness gone too far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a tendency to do that anyway. I mean, you get politically correct um, stuff that happens that you don't want to happen. I all of a sudden became an African. <laughs> correctness, African American. I'm not African. I'm not African. I'm not African. I'm not African. <laughs> You're black. And what does that mean? Well, I use the word black, and, and I use that too loosely, because I don't like the word. What's a good word? The shadow. No, I am. You call me Negro, you call me Hugging, you call me Color Boy, you call me Black, you call me African. I'm not an African. I'm not an African. I'm not an African. I'm not an African. To play it safe. I just go with African American for everybody, but then everybody that's black is not African American. See, I like just being called black. I never adapted to the African American term. I just like being referred to as black. I'm comfortable, I like it, it fills me up with pride. But if you meet somebody from an island or something, they not African American. What do you mean by America is my mama? I don't know nothing else. Hmm? I wasn't eating chitlins when I was in Africa. I wasn't eating watermelon when I was in Africa. Huh? I wasn't wearing zoot suits when I was in Africa. I wasn't getting my hair cut when I was in Africa. This bitch is my mama. And yours too. Except I know it's mine. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I have no African descendant in my blood. I'm a, I'm a Native American. So literally, I'm a Cherokee, I'm a Blackfoot, I'm a Red Tail Indian. That's what's in my blood. A lot of people in America is indigenous people. You're not from Africa. You're not from Africa. You're not from Africa. Let's keep switching the identity to hide the people. Why don't we just keep renaming you? Are you Negro? Oh, no, 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 you're not Negro. No, 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 you're colored. No, 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 you're not colored. You're African American. And this is what they name you. Because I know a white guy who grew up in South Africa. And he now lives in America. He is an African American. And more African American than most. Do you 
you see how African American is a misnomer? It's a misnomer. Don't check that box. It's a title given to blacks by democratic slavers. To watch all of my exclusive content not featured here on my channel, log on to my website at I'm just here to make you think dot com slash films. For well over 500 years, dating back to the 13th century as historically recorded across the world, indigenous Aboriginal Niji of Turtle Island were called a variety of derogative terms by visitors, exchangers, colonists, traders and settlers, mainly due to outsiders being unfamiliar with all of the indigenous Niji's multiple native languages, so they would base their comedic name calling by the shade of the Niji skin tone and not the actual color of their complexion. During the mid 1500s and well into the 1600s, while the trade of tobacco, corn, rice, and the enslavement of some of the indigenous Niji were already in progress, Spaniard colonists of Portugal were colonizing lands in Southeast and Southwest Africa while simultaneously colonizing nearly all of South America and southern geographical locations of North America. According to archived records and documents by Spain, during this time period, many of the Spanish colonists dubbed the indigenous Niji as Negros and Negras, based solely on their genders and the shade of their skin tones, and not their domicile of origins. For example, the English settler John Roth was primarily responsible for documenting and delivering tobacco from the colony of Virginia to the Virginia Company of London by original orders from then King James I of England. Having the ability to speak Latin, English, and Spanish, he was able to create what he called, quote, a milder smoke by purchasing tobacco seeds from some of the Spanish colonists having settled in Florida and from some of the indigenous Aborigines of Florida, the West Indies, and parts of Venezuela and Bermuda. In John Ross Journal, currently located in full at the National Archives facilities in London, he documented the round trip shipments of the tobacco, silver and gold, and the famously known quote, 20 and odd Negras, which was changed by the Department of Historic Resources of Virginia three times from 20 and odd Negras to 20 and odd Negroes to now officially read today as 20 and odd Africans, commencing in 1992. What is very important to note is that the Spanish called the Africans Negras and Negroes as well, due to the shades of their skin tone having been these 20 and odd Negras were captured by Captain John Jope and his crew aboard the British built warship called the Treasure War directly from the San Juan Bautista which was the much larger Spanish owned sailboat that deported from Angola in Southwest Africa attempting to make its way to Vieira Cruz. Now, I shared more information concerning this topic in both documentaries called The Untold Truth about the African slave trade, but I mentioned all of this to share some of the history of the complexity surrounding the multiple derogative terms that were used to label the indigenous aborigines of America. So now you can understand the confusion that was designed through the format of eugenics to make it seem as if the Africans and the indigenous Niji or rather the indigenous people of Turtle Island, which is now known as North America, are one and the same when they're not. 
And this is where the mistake stimulated from. In the year of 1790 and beyond, census enumerators allegedly went from town to town, city to city, and door to door, deciding who was of what race and documented their families they meet as such. These unsupervised federal employees had a mammoth amount of influence on indigenous aborigines genealogy records still to this very day. In fact, what the census takers informally documented on a sheet of paper was literally based on their mere individual opinions and then later deemed as official records that were sacrosanct, leading to hundreds of years of the census takers ideas of race being considered as official historical records of information throughout America. What's very important to note is that these census takers were provided instructions and they recorded the ethnic category of various family members based on their perception of the family when they visited. So if you are attempting to find and interpret data about your family's history, these results can be confusing especially if one census they are deemed as all other free or slaves or free persons of color or mulatto and even black. In most early census years, there were no categories for Indian at all, while in others, free people of color were recorded all in one group. More about this in my documentary called The Untold Truth About the Classifications of Race but I said all of that to say this, where your family fell into a race classification category was solely up to the individual census taker of that particular area, not your family members. The term Negro and colored stuck around throughout the years of forced colonization, and especially when copper colored indigent servants were cultivating the industrial design and capitalist societies of America between the late 1400s and the early 1900s. Now, since the distribution of slaves made the wealthiest profit more than selling any resources during the 15th and 16th centuries, slavery became the biggest business across the world, where they were called Negroes or Coloreds by the English and the Spanish for decades until around the late 1950s and early 60s. The term black gradually made its mark within the copper color communities once they were granted privileges to vote during an election and promised civil rights commencing during the 1960s. But now let's not forget about the early 1900s uprising of the boot denominations. Um, this secret society, this black this particular black secret society that we'll talk about today is the first of the black Greek societies started in 1904 and that word that you said boule is actually an acronym it's a Sigma Pi Phi Sigma Pi Phi 1904 in Philadelphia and for most of our people uh, we are not prepped to the responsibility of secret society in the American society mm -hmm. and this founding constitution this illegal criminal enterprise was a Masonic affair and uh, a masonry is a form of secret society there are other well-known secret societies like skull and bones at Yale of which this corrupt president and his father were members of and it is that society that the black society modeled itself after. So when they wrote their first history book, The History of Sigma Pi Phi, by a very noted black author, university president Charles Wesley, who wrote the history book for the Elks, the Prince Hall Masons, uh, National Council of Negro Women, Alpha Phi Alpha, and Sigma Pi Phi. And as a result, in there, in page 28 of its first history book, it noted that it wanted to be like Skull and Bones at Yale. As we began to read deeper, it had another analogy in the story to Skull and Bones. It wasn't until we got the history book that the analogy that looked happenstantial in the story in the LA Times was actually 
deeper uh, in the actual history book where they drew attention to Skull and Bones. It denoted that W.E.B. Du Bois was a member and it began to describe uh, people, uh, influential people in the present day society and historically uh, our uh, university, historically by college presidents are primarily coming out of this uh, advisors to the king. And that word, that boule word can be looked up in a encyclopedia. Well now people don't use them, they use internet. And that's a dangerous thing, a dangerous dependency. But boule, B-O-U-L-E, the Greek version. There's a French version that's a coming together, a conclave. The AKA called their convention, the boule. But the Greek word is what we're looking for, the advisors to the king. The lower house of the Greek parliament is called boule. Mm -hmm. And if you know the American congressional system, Senate, six years, more power, authority, only 100, two per state. Congress, 435, have to run every two years. Your lower house has less power and authority. So it appears as if in finding the boule that within it was a subordination to something else. And in its history book, it drew attention. Here's a logo. And this is a, uh, their logo is a Grecian Sphinx. It's an animal. And this Grecian Sphinx is similar to a griffin or a gargoyle. Kind of ironically, the Boulay had their convention in Los Angeles in 1941. And where else? Griffin Park. And this, this logo, this symbol, is a guardian animal. This would be similar to a Rockweiler or a dog or a German Shepherd. They tend to protect something higher than itself. So there was this thing they went through, a, a born man versus the made man. The born man, the king and the queens of Europe, uh, had to deputize people to colonize the lands, the Columbuses and the uh, Cecil Rhodeses who went to Africa. They weren't the aristocracy, but they fought to be gladiators and colonists and explorers. The Lewis and Clark, who were masons, uh, these men used the societies to advance the wishes of the ruling class, and they set up a system a circle within a circle within another circle each circle protected the circle within it mm -hmm. so when you look to that boule logo you see there's a urn there's an animal with the wing of, of the bird the well, tail of a lion and, and it's got an urn and it's got its paw over the urn and it says in the history book number two by Hobart Jarrett that in the urn are the names of the people who are chosen to lead the state which suggests that part of the society function is not to make known who the people of power and authority are. There is a web. There is a web. There's sports. They're the media, mm -hmm. they're education, mm -hmm. they're social service, mm -hmm. they're astronauts, <laughs> they're the church. Right. They, they are all of that. You're right. They are the secret societies too. Yeah. And they all work in a loose-knit fashion and they keep disagreements within a manageable limit. Cultivating and enforcing the propagandic agenda deriving from the Freemasonry logic formatted belief system of eugenics that blacks came from Africa. One of the darker secrets and biggest mistakes ever made in American history was engendered by a copper-colored man by influencing fellow copper-colored men and women to deem themselves as African-American. The illusory term derived from a narcissistic reverend turned presidential candidate in the year of 1988. While campaigning for the advancement of his political position, Reverend Jesse Jackson held a formal news conference to urge all Americans to utilize the term African Americans when referring to copper colored citizens of America. In an interview about the term African American, Jackson stated, quote, it puts us in our proper historical context. Every ethnic group in this country has a reference to some land base, some historical culture base. African Americans have hit that level of cultural maturity. Here's the problem with that. The term African American is not a legal form of racial classification. As a matter of fact, neither is black. Both terms were promoted as if it would make the American color people feel equal to those that are classified as white by the census. The so-called blacks or the so-called African Americans are the only ones that actually believes that the 13th or 14th amendments were established into the constitution in their favor. But yet, 
neither mimic clearly mentions anything about blacks or African Americans being granted citizenship to this country, nor full rights as an American citizen should have. I have shared full details concerning this information in my videos called The Untold Truth About the Term Black, Part 1 and Part 2, but I mention all of this as a warning to inform you that both terms, Black and African American, literally does not have any standing in law still to this very day. In fact, Coloreds or Negroes are the only people who were not lawfully allowed to learn anything before and sometime after their enslavement, except for the industrialized religious belief system of the many denominations of Christianity that was brought to the ports of our lands by the Europeans in the 17th century. Speaking of Europeans, the original definition of the term American is described in the Webster's Dictionary in 1828 as, quote, a native of America, originally applied to the aboriginals or copper-colored races found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. The aboriginals are also the only people in this country who were dehumanized by what is called the law of the land. The entire world benefited from the enslavement of the indigenous aboriginals. And still to this very day, those people that have benefited from the enslavement of our ancestors has said and did absolutely nothing about it systematically. So when they tell you to go back to Africa, is it because they want this land all for themselves? Is that what they mean by making America great again? Or is it because the U.S. Census defines the classification of white as a person with origins of either Europe, the Middle East, or of North Africa? And that's what they originally derived from. So who should be called African American now? Just here to make you think.